project that was born here uh, at Civic Hack Night, a formerly open gov, and in part because of a really great partnership with the uh, mayor's innovation delivery team. Uh, and so a, a culmination of that work uh, and also just really a really great partnership with the Smart Chicago Collaborative uh, has culminated in the launch of the Early Learning Finder, which is a tool that enables uh, low-income parents in Chicago to search and check for their eligibility for early learning programs. Uh, so we're really excited to talk to you a little bit more about the process that led to the delivery of the project. Um, the innovation delivery team has been leading some analysis in early learning to identify what become the persistent barriers to enrollment in programs, both from a functional process standpoint, like do you know where to go, and from a long-term resource standpoint. Do we have the resources in the right place to target families of highest need? Are we doing the best to send uh, roaming teams into high poverty areas? And do the programs themselves uh, stack up from a funding perspective to be accessible to the families that need them? Um, through this analysis, uh, issues around navigation emerge time and time again. Just the simple question of do we know where to go to sign up for a program? I think every year we change it just a little bit, thinking we've done a little better, and every year families say, but I just figured out how to do it last year, where am I supposed to go now? Um, the University of Chicago Urban Ed Lab has been leading some focus groups over the spring with families um, in our high need targeted areas to identify, you know, why did you decide to enroll in a program? What were the barriers that you face? What are your peers who are choosing not to enroll facing and, and what do they think about? And one of the things that came up uh, a few times is that this negative word of mouth on the enrollment process, that it's so tedious and complicated, is causing families that might have been interested um, to drop out. Uh, but we start with the online form creation and what keeps us accountable is that we have weekly meetings where we're demoing what we've built so far uh, with the uh, innovation delivery team. And we're also checking in um, too with the early learning portal in terms of what's going on and some of the things that we can expect as we're moving forward. Uh, next was our SMS form creation, which um, interestingly enough is, is not simply a copy and paste job. It's something that uh, lots some of the select all uh, questions, as you might imagine, don't cleanly always map over uh, to a 140 character limit. And so we had to really think through what type of adaptive interaction do we want to have with the questions that we have on our screener on the actual website versus what do we want to do with SMS. And it was really, really great to talk through and, and move through this uh, in partnership with the innovation delivery team. Um, so Nick, the Early Learning Finder is the latest addition to our Ruby on Rails app. Um, and we've had a great experience working with Rails for this project. Um, and for our text messaging service, we use Twilio. Um, and so our primary task with the Early Learning Finder was to use the data on the city's data portal that lists 731 different early learning centers throughout the city of Chicago and return three centers that are relevant uh, for a particular family based on personal preferences and then also eligibility requirements. So the first thing we started with was eligibility. Um, and so typically this comes down to household size and income, uh, but the state also makes different allowances um, based on economic and family factors in certain situations such as being homeless, uh, being a foster parent or having a child with special needs, um, et cetera. And so that also comes into a determination as well. And then Rose mentioned the 10 different um, early learning programs, and those all have different eligibility requirements. Um, and so because each center on the portal is flagged as being of a certain program type, we were able to connect all of those centers with their requirements. Um, and so after filtering for eligibility, we looked at age uh, to ensure that we were referring parents to centers um, that serve children um, for all the relevant ages for their family. Um, also preferences around length of day, so part day, full day, or home visiting. Um, and then for finding centers in their preferred location, we use zip code. Um, and then also filtering for bilingual instruction. I think it's sort of interesting that of the 731 centers on the portal, 144 of them offer a language other than English. And then we uh, give preference to programs uh, that have a higher quality rating um, and also consider parents' preferences around uh, length of week, so part week versus full week programs. Um, and so considering all of these things together, we return uh, three centers to all uh, families that are eligible for early learning services uh, in the city. And uh, the Chicago Early Learning Portal is a way for parents to search by address, either 
um, their home address, their work address, a family address, an address that is important to them, and then find locations near them, be able to select and compare those locations, and then the next step is actually making contact with those um, locations and, and finding more information about them and then you know, getting enrolled in that way. So the Early Learning Portal has, uh, was launched in fall of 2012 um, for the same goals as are currently happening where we are trying to increase enrollment in early learning programs throughout the uh, city of Chicago. And the work started all with um, data collection in summer of 2012. Derek, I believe you were also part of some of this work with yeah. the data sources, yes. And so Smart Chicago received a bunch of lists from CPS, BFSS, Ounce of Prevention, Illinois Action for Children, of all of the programs that receive city funding uh, throughout the city of Chicago. And what happened was we cleaned up that list, we um, actually created and compiled one full list that is one of the most comprehensive lists of programs now in the city of Chicago. Um, we also created an admin tool which provided infrastructure for different stakeholders to enter the, and update data on a regular basis. So as programs change throughout the years, um, they're able to change hours, um, location details, descriptions, and provide more and more information, um, which then gets fed into uh, the city of Chicago's open data portal. 